drinking wine. The only thing I don't like is I don't like wine companies telling me what to pair my wine with. I feel like that should be left up to me based on my financial situation of the moment. Because on the back of the bottle, they're like, pair this wine with roasted duck. Pair this wine with aged cheese or Italian cuisine. I'm like, the hell with that. This wine will be paired with chicken tenders and tater tots. <laughs> Tonight on Laughs, we bring the comedy show to you. There's no drink minimum and no sitting next to sweaty, gross strangers. Yay! Now, here's your host, Steve Hofstetter. Hello! Oh, it's another week of Laughs. We're so excited. We've got a wonderful show for you tonight from Louisville, Kentucky. Please give it up for Darren Rogers. When I first started doing comedy, I asked this guy, I was like, what is it like to go on stage and really kill it? And he's like, it's just like having sex. And when you get done, it's like you gave the crowd an orgasm. And I thought that was a weird analogy. Because I've never finished having sex and been like, thank you, that's my time. <laughs> I'm Darren Rogers. Are you ready for your next performer? <laughs> I have DVDs for sale in the back. <laughs> I was on a bus, and I had on a Johnny Cash t-shirt. And there was this older white man on the bus. And he looked at me, he goes, I like that shirt, buddy. And I'm like, thank you very much. And he goes, I didn't know you like country. I'm like, I didn't know you like shirts. I don't know anything about anyone I don't know. That's how strangers work. Just paid my bill at a restaurant where I didn't order any wine, and I got an alert from my bank about suspicious activity. And now, young as hell with Taylor Tomlinson. I was trying to make small talk with one of the girls I worked with first day on the job, did not have anything in common with her at all. Asked her what her favorite foods were. She told me cranberries, blueberries, and almonds. I was like, those are ingredients. That's just stuff you put inside bread. Like, what is? She's like one of those gym rat people. I hate those people. Like, those people who talk about their abs like they're their children. Do you know those people? I've never even seen my abs. I'm pretty sure I abandoned them, okay? I don't know. You know those people? They're like, oh, can't put that in my body. That's not good for me. That's not good for me. They talk like that because they're hungry. Just like, hi, 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 hi. Can't put that in my body. That's not good for my abs. It's like, I love my abs too, Chelsea. That's why I have a protective layer. Cushion the little tykes. One man's fat is another man's bubble wrap, okay? <laughs> Just gonna get a tattoo says fragile. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ugh, I forgot to set my clock forward. What are we doing, the Facebook thing? Okay. Like us at facebook.com slash last TV show. Nailed it. Going back to bed. I don't do well with compatibility because not only do you have to be compatible with a woman, you have to be compatible with her and she has to be compatible with you and your situation. Because if you broke, you can't, you only can talk to certain type of women. <laughs> ha ha hell. <laughs> If you ain't got no money, you gotta mess with chicks with problems, issues. You gotta mess with like stupid chicks. You gotta mess with like chicks with like chronic dry eye. You... It's a lot more annoying than you think. If you haven't been through it, you don't know. And you definitely cannot talk to a woman that knows you broke. Let me tell you how I know. I'm at the bank a couple years ago. Bank teller's probably one of the sexiest women I've ever seen in my life. I walk in, I get in her line, I'm staring. She looks good, I'm staring. <laughs> I notice she kind of looked back up at me. We kind of had a little moment for a second. <laughs> That's when she smiled at me, and I'm going to be honest, I peed a little bit on myself. <laughs> Not a lot. <laughs> Just enough where I can't say it didn't happen. I get up to the counter, I give her my account information, everything, she's doing her thing, and I just couldn't hold it in no more. I'm like, excuse me, ma'am, the next time that you get hungry, I'd like to be the man to feed you. She looks down at her monitor and replies, well, I don't think we both can eat on $8. Listen. I have a son and two daughters. I'm, uh, I'm happy I had daughters. They seem smarter. I love my son. I'm gonna say it twice, you guys. I love my son. 
but holy crap. Uh, I had to teach him some life lessons. I did not know you had to teach mammals, okay? He was the first kid. I read parenting books. I went to a parenting class. I tried to be prepared. When he was little, some weird stuff came up. Lesson number one, very surprisingly, don't put stuff in your butt. <laughs> yeah, I also thought we were born without knowledge, okay? I didn't know I had to coach that at any point, but for a while, he thought it was for storage. I had to step in. I think from a toddler perspective, he was like, look, I've got three Hot Wheels. I would like to take to the kitchen. I've got two hands. Maybe there's another way. Yeah, that's when daddy's walking by like, what do you, wow, new rule. No cars in the butt. We're gonna put that on the fridge. It's important. It's more important than not lying, actually. It's not a pocket, weirdo. What do you, he didn't know. He's like, why, why can't I? I'm like, I'm not sure. Because some stuff shouldn't go in your butt. <laughs> Which is when my wife started laughing really hard from the other room. <laughs> Everyone get it? That's gonna get it? Okay. <laughs> Lesson number two. Uh, no, we don't play with our penis while we're eating dinner. <laughs> Why? Because mommy won't let us. <laughs> Yeah, I asked, she's not cool with it. You know. She doesn't even have one, that's a her problem. <laughs> Shh, here she comes. Here. Nothing will make you realize you make bad decisions in life more than your bank statement. That, that reinforces everything. I've been overdrafting my account three times this month. Right, you think you're doing good, you like bank statement, like, oh my God, that Snickers bro cost me $37.50. That ain't satisfying. Two beautiful lesbians, right? right? And they're real lesbians, not that bull crap you young girls do at a club to get attention. <laughs> you girls know what I'm talking about. You see girls that go like, oh my God, Melissa, look at all those guys looking at us. <laughs> Give me another kiss. Oh my God. <laughs> Touch my boobie. <laughs> we are crazy. I mean, she is a real lesbian. Like, oh, babe, I got a flat. Well, let's fix that, son of a bitch. <laughs> That kind of lesbian, you know what I mean? <laughs> and all my friends are like, oh man, it must be cool, man, living with two hot lesbians. I better be jumping off all the time at your house. I go, really? Do you know what it's like to lose every argument twice? <laughs> you don't stand a chance. And now the one is pregnant, right? I know, exactly. You guys are like, really? What kind of lesbian is that? <laughs> a new kind of transformer lesbian? What the hell kind of going on? <laughs> what happened was they got that in vitro thing or whatever in it, but but it costs like fifteen thousand dollars, right? I'm five feet away. <laughs> I could have saved them fourteen eight. <laughs> you give me a Walmart gift card and some tamales, man. You got yourself a baby. Fun fact: comedians wake up at two p.m. and have no savings account. It's laughs. Welcome back to the number one rated show on TV. Just go with it. It's laughs. And now, Matt as Hell with Tom Simmons. McDonald's has a new ad. I don't know if you see they're doing where you can pay with love. Yeah, yeah it's pretty cool. I was in there, they told me I could uh, pay for my meal by showing my son I loved him and cared about him. So I knocked the food out of his hand and we went to Chipotle. All right. <laughs> yeah, <'cause> I care. <laughs> yeah. We live at the peak of human technology, right? Every advancement of all of the history of human thought right at our fingertips. But I gotta be honest, I don't know how anything works. I don't know how my cell phone works, anything, electricity. I, you know, I know it's protons and electrons, but that's it. You know, if I got sent back in a time machine and they needed my help inventing electricity, they'd be screwed. Like, I don't know, we had a switch on the wall. I worry about the future. I think we're doomed, you know? I really do. I think we're in trouble, you know? We got all these doomsday preppers, which is kind of interesting to me. There's already a group of people that have learned how to doomsday prep. They're called the Amish, idiot, you know? 
<laughs> yeah, if we lose all technology at one time or whatever, like these doomsday, the only people that aren't going to be affected are going to be the damn Amish. Yeah. We walk down the street with all our crap, they'll be whipping by in a buggy, like, ha-ha, who's laughing now, jackass? <laughs> well, giddy up. Yeah. They're running down to their farms, like, okay, I agree with you, the world is flat. How do I make the butter? <laughs> Apparently, saying, make it a double, followed by an awkward wink, doesn't work at the pharmacy. It has taken me 10 long, hard years, but I am finally done with paying my student loans, which is a big deal for me. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. 10 years. I mean, I still owe them tons of money. I'm just done paying these people. Like, that's, I'm just. <laughs> just broke and done. I hate it. When I'm not telling jokes, though, I, uh, I mentor and I tutor kids uh, in, uh, in Harlem, right? And I love doing it. I love giving back. I appreciate that. I love doing it. This is what I learned working with kids. I don't know if anybody has kids or, or works with kids, but this is what I learned. You are always thinking one of two things when you work or have kids, right? You are always either thinking, I will do any and everything in my power to keep this kid from hurt or harm, right? Or you're thinking, it's going to take everything in my power to keep me from hurting and harming this kid. You understand? Mm. Just the other day, my supervisor was like, Chuck, man, the kids love you. They really love you. But I need to ask you a very important question. I'm like, go ahead. He goes, are you able to identify the symptoms of a child who's been physically abused by his parents? I'm like, of course. They're the ones behaving, right? They're the ones. Think you're losing an hour this weekend? Watch all of our stand-up clips and full episodes at youtube.com slash show, and you'll lose days. I don't like it that women love Marilyn Monroe. Uh, there's that quote you see people post every so often. Uh, if you can't handle me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. Which is just a license for sociopathy. Like, can't handle me at my worst. Maybe he doesn't deserve you at your worst. All right? like, like, maybe lasagna doesn't make up for begging his friend <laughs> and then calling him a <laughs> when he cries about it. <laughs> Why would anyone take life advice from Marilyn Monroe? What are her, what are her credentials? Uh, there's that famous picture where her, she's standing over an air grate and it's blowing her skirt up like a 1950s vagina pic. <laughs> and she, she begged a lot of dudes, the president brother. She, she was the Kim Kardashian of her time. Why would you follow that? What does she have to tell you about life? She killed herself. Or, or was murdered. We don't know. But what we do know is at least one person could not handle her at her worst. Fun fact, comedians live on chicken fingers, Diet Coke, and broken dreams. It's laughs. Most comedians do not have children because they're too broke and no one wants to have sex with them. Hey, are you almost done packing? I'm coming right now. Oh, man. She always takes forever to pack. Okay. I'm ready. What, what is this? What do you mean? It's my stuff. You packed a full suitcase? Yeah. What's the problem? We're leaving for one day. I know, Cody, but there's so many situations you can run into in a day. What could we possibly run into in 24 hours? I don't know. A snowstorm? We're going to San Diego. Could happen. Here's the sketch of the week. Some people think of coffee as just a drink. Other people say, it's just part of my morning ritual. I feel sorry for these people. Coffee is an art. Coffee is an experience. 
Coffee is life. Everything you've been told about coffee is a lie, and I'm here to set the record straight because I can't take the lies anymore. I like foam art. Me too. Then I graduated middle school. What about iced coffee? Is that only if it's brewed in the traditional Japanese style? Hey. Creamer? Just put poison in there. Just put poison in there, and then you're killing me. Sugar? Only if it's turbinado organic sugar from the mountainsides of Colombia? No. Then I would probably say no. What about milk? I don't mix cow and bean. Not my rules. Those rules come from Hashem. Thank you, Hashem. Soy milk? No. <laughs> Like, I don't... I don't even know why you would even say that. <laughs> to me. <laughs> like, coffee is, is just, like, so important to me. And then... It just... Soy... Soy milk? Like, are, are you serious? I just... I gotta go. I can't. I can't. He's a veteran of 15 comedy festivals, but it's his television debut tonight. Let's watch Danny Palmer. I'm a single guy. I like being single. It's a fun lifestyle, you know? But I do feel like at some point I should settle down and get married. I mean, it is the natural order of things out in nature, right? Like, if you go to a pond and you see a family of ducks, there's always, like, a mom duck and a dad duck and four little baby ducks. There's never, like, an older, single, <laughs> jaded, horny duck. <laughs> Out cruising the MILF ducks. It's time for the Vine of the Week. I know you already lost a full hour, so don't worry, you'll only lose six seconds on this one. Hey, I'm going to Starbucks. Do you want anything? Yes, I will take a vanilla frap, non fat grande, but in a vainty. Nope. But I am, I am trying to lose weight, though. I, I joined a gym. Uh, joined, I joined a gym about nine months ago. I've actually lost about $100 and, um, $135. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> all right, that's. Okay, all right, that's a, a weird thing to clap at. Oh, yeah, you, you know what, you are fat. We agree, we are, you are kind of fat. Comedians don't have health insurance. If they get sick, we just shoot them out back. Comedians are nocturnal creatures who live to 38 years old. Let's watch Charlotte Magazine's pick for the top comedian of 2014. It's Blair Nyas. So as you introduce me, my name is Blair, but that's actually spelled B-L-A-Y-R. Why? Because my mom's a jerk. <laughs> She's like, I'm gonna give you the whitest name ever and then mess up the spelling. <laughs> Enjoy that, man. I didn't get a traditional black name like Aquanetta. Um, or not Zima. Uh, I'm not a traditional black girl in a lot of ways and white people love to point that out to me. Like, oh my God, Blair, you're so white. You are the whitest white girl. I'm like, I am blacker than you. You're so white. And then I stab them. Uh, who's turning white now? Just kidding. I did grow up in predominantly white environments, though, so I've always been the black friend, which means I get to answer lots of uncomfortable race questions. They're just fun. Like, Blair, do you celebrate Kwanzaa? <laughs> I don't know, are you planning on getting me a present? <laughs> then yes. <laughs> Blair, um, do black people tan? Everyone's skin gets darker in the sun, except for Flavor Flav. He's dark. your job for being an hour late, turn lemons into lemonade and like us at Laughs TV Show. You may not have a job, but at least you can read lots of funny tweets. I get drunk like an 18 year old white girl gets drunk. <laughs> and that's how I behave at the end of the night. <laughs> I'm still the one standing outside of the bar like, Stacy, we're leaving! <laughs> Where are my shoes? 
I take them off because it hurts when I walk in them. <laughs> Always wear flats when you're going to go dancing. That's what I say. <laughs> Thanks for watching us, everybody. That's been our show. Have a good night.